Hello and welcome to this edition of Access Asia here on France 24. Coming up, the coronavirus ravages India. We take a look at the women on the front line and their battle to slow the spread of the disease in the world's second biggest country. While Wuhan, ground zero in the pandemic, claims to have defeated the virus, Chinese authorities say victory was only possible because of strict measures. And they sing and dance, but their lives are not all glitz and glamour. We take a look behind the scenes of Japan's idol industry. Well, the peak of the coronavirus in India may still be weeks away, and yet the figures coming out of the second biggest country are already alarming. New cases and deaths are soaring regularly among the highest in the world. Authorities are especially concerned about rural areas where many people have abandoned health and safety protocols. Nadia Sharbit has more. Across rural India, COVID-19 continues to spread, more often than not undetected. Here, there are no hospitals or doctors and very little public infrastructure. Spearheading efforts to contain the virus are these women dressed in red. All of them are social workers and have volunteered to help. Without them, villages would be left to their own devices. In these documents, every local resident is logged and their details updated regularly. This is our format. The name of the family is the phone number. This is high risk, sir. Not everyone is ready to listen to what they have to say. And visits sometimes turn violent, but not here. Their method to go door to door visiting dozens of homes every day. A red-clad brigade keeping watch on their village, and it's a mission they perform with little in terms of protection. Usually they're responsible for vaccination campaigns and also help women during labor. Vital work for which they get paid just 50 euros a month. When the pandemic broke out, they were thrust onto the front line, put in charge of performing COVID-19 testing. In return, the government paid them a one-time bonus of just under 12 euros. Despite legitimate fears, they continue their mission. Some don't even have masks, making do with scarves. Many of these social workers have been infected and their families along with them. Menka is among them. After displaying serious symptoms, she's finally in recovery, but now faces social rejection. Stigmatized, underpaid, and by no means trained to take on such a mission, around a million of these social workers have become India's vanguard against the virus, putting their health and well-being on the line. Anti-government protests have gained momentum across Thailand. The student-led mass movement has called for unprecedented reform. They accuse the monarchy of being out of touch and unaccountable, and they're calling for a complete overhaul of the government, which came to power after a coup in 2014. Those are strong accusations in a country whose strict defamation laws can bring a punishment of up to 15 years in prison, but students say they will not back down. Well, the city that was ground zero for the pandemic now claims to have defeated the coronavirus. Life in Wuhan has largely returned to normal. 
China is celebrating the success, saying it proves that the strict and controversial measures imposed on the population paid off. Catherine Viet takes a look. It was the pool party heard around the world. As images of thousands of partygoers packed tightly together at a water park in Wuhan went viral. With nary a mask in sight, many on social media deemed the gathering irresponsible. For the Chinese government, it was a sign their approach to fighting the virus has been a success. This shows that Wuhan's fight against the coronavirus has achieved a strategic victory. I think that this shows that China's government has achieved a strategic victory in its fight against COVID-19. Once the epicenter of the original outbreak, Wuhan has now largely returned to life as normal, albeit with a few adjustments. We can go shopping freely. Mm. We can go to, we can even go to movie theaters. Uh, everything is normal, mm. except for that um, we have a regular checking of the health QR code. And also you need to, if you go to, uh, you know, uh, pretty congested places, you even have to have your temperature tested. Mm. So that's kind of a different from uh, what we had in uh, before the uh, COVID-19. That's a far cry from January when Wuhan went into a stringent 76-day lockdown, while the government rushed to build hospitals to accommodate all the new patients stricken by the virus. Now in a move laden with symbolism, those same temporary hospitals are being dismantled. Officials lifted the lockdown in April. In mid-May, with six new cases detected, an ambitious plan to test the city's 11 million residents was put in place. Since then, there have been no domestically transmitted cases in Wuhan. The Chinese government relying on heavy surveillance and mandatory contact tracing to keep the virus at bay. But critics accuse officials of stifling dissent and controlling the narrative so as to ensure the Chinese model is touted as the one to follow. Japan's idol industry grooms aspiring singers, often young girls, and turns them into megastars. But with the success comes a steep price. Performers are often meant to impart innocence, all the while wearing sexy outfits. They're not allowed to have any love interest, for they are in an exclusive relationship with their fans, often older males. Critics say the industry inappropriately commercializes young girls. It may look like a high school performance, but this is a paid concert in a basement in Shibuya, Tokyo's party district. The audience is almost entirely male, and they're all here to cheer their idols. In Japan, the term is used for pop music starlets idolized by their fans. Most idols combine a simple recipe for success. Sexy costumes paired with an innocent, childlike charm. There are more than 10,000 idols in Japan, like Rina, who has been in the profession for about a year. A phenomenon that's attracting growing criticism as the idols keep getting younger. In this group, they're 11 to 13 years old. And most of the fans are the same age as their fathers. After the concert comes the moment the fans have been waiting for, a chance to meet their idols. For 25 euros, they get a signed photo and one strictly timed minute to speak to the idol. These photos are for personal collections, but they are sometimes shared on the internet. Many fans end up spending large amounts at these meetings, like this man who spends more than 500 euros per month. 
しいですけどもこう女子を貫いてるとか女子力とか非常に高い、まあ、そういったところがすごい魅力っていうか生物学的に一番美しいのは12歳頃ってよく言いませんここから大人になるかならないかのちょうど狭間ぐらいが一番光って見えるような気がする These feelings border on pedophilia but the men claim they have no sexual attraction just an idealized admiration for these young girls According to their parents, there has never been any incident of fans misbehaving with the girls. To better understand how the idolization of young girls has become a collective fantasy, we head to Akihabara in the heart of Tokyo. Everywhere you look, there are images of female characters from video games and mangas, hypersexualized but with a childish air, like these girls dressed as maids to attract clients to bars and shops. However, According to this producer of idol concerts, fans are driven less by sexual fantasies and more by a desire to become children again. ところで働いたりとか、まあ人生を生きていたりするので、踊ってるアイドルに合わせてそのフロアにいるお客さんたちも子供っぽいフリを a country with growing numbers of single people, there are more than 3 million idol fans. And finally, the world's oldest panda living in captivity has celebrated her birthday. Xixing turned 38 at this zoo in southwest China, and she's quite spry considering that is comparable to well over 100 years for humans. Now, despite that cake, zookeepers say she is fit and maintains a svelte body of just 100 kilograms. Sadly, she could not celebrate with all her family. After all, she has 10 children and more than 150 descendants spanning the globe, living in more than 20 countries. That's it for this edition. Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned to France 24.